Welcome to Sustainable Sessions, hosted by yours truly, Lucas and Lauren. Episode 7, featuring the rain stick shower. My name is Alicia, and I am calling in from Toronto, and um, our business is Rain Stick Shower. Thanks for coming on. We're really excited to have you. Um, So specifically with your niche of the climate change problem, you know, it's a very broad topic from stuff between plastics like composting and all these things in between why are you so passionate about your particular niche of this climate issue and what kind of got you into that uh that stream yeah it's that's a good question and i would say that's it's there's a lot of different triggers in that i mean our we are focusing in on water and more specifically residential water use because we use so much of it um you know, our company is, is dedicated to reducing the amount of water that we use per shower. And so, you know, for example, when you shower, when someone showers, they typically heat up 100 liters of water. And then it only touches their skin for a second before it goes down the drain. And so we found that this was really wasteful. And, you know, you waste 150 trillion liters of water every year, you know, we do in North America. And it's also expensive. A lot of our utility bills go to that. And so, I mean, from, it, it's, it's such a clear issue, but the, the solutions so far have always forced compromise. And so, you know, what do we do? Okay, well, you put in a flow regulator and your gallons per minute or your liters per minute drops way down. And so, you know, shampoo is barely washed out of your hair. And so we kind of looked at this problem and we said, there must be a better way to, to solve this. And, you know, we're actually both from, my co-founder and I were from uh, the Okanagan Valley. And I think in Canada, people don't really associate um, water scarcity to certain regions. It's just not really part of the conversation. That's because in large part, Canada, um, you know, has a lot of water, but, <laughs> but it's only in a couple areas of it and it's not readily available across Canada. And so, you know, we're from an area of the Okanagan Valley where we actually do face water scarcity for some time we go through droughts. And so we always kind of thought about this, um, you know, the, the local government is always telling people to reduce, reuse, you know, the, look, look for ways to really reduce our consumption. And so through that, we said, there's a problem here. We want to do something more about it. Um, particularly when we shower, it's such an evident problem. Sure, there's a lot of residential problems that we could solve, but um, this is the first one because when we look at showering from residential use, it is um, after our toilets, and we're making huge headways with toilet flushing uh, now and efficiency, showers are the next greatest um, uh, water usage in the home. That was super cool. And like, honestly, even for us, like we don't even think about the amount of water that um, we consume. And we actually had someone like on the podcast, like um, a few episodes ago, tell us that whenever he showers, he actually puts like um, a bucket under the unused water just so he can use it later for something else um, in his day, which is like super crazy because like no one would think to use that water that you're just wasting for another it's, purpose. It's it's crazy. I mean, it's it's something where I feel like there's a lot of places in the world where water stress and water scarcity is evident. You faced mm-hmm. it. You've opened up your taps and water has not come out. I mean, you look at places like Sao Paulo in Brazil, where, you know, there, there is such evident water scarcity. You look at South Africa, where they had three months left until they call it um, day zero, where they're running out of water. In Australia and Brisbane, you know, they were given six months until that. But, but as a result, I think it's forced a lot of cities and, and, and even from a countrywide level to reassess the way that water is used from a residential standpoint, but also from a, you know, com- commercial or an industrial standpoint. And so, you know, until you're faced with that, I think that sometimes we don't realize it, but I l- always love to hear about how people are really rethinking about the way that we use water and coming up with alternate solutions, like, you know, grabbing it from the shower and reusing it in other ways. I think that's great. I guess kind of to like lead into more so like what your business does in the technology, maybe you can speak a little bit more on how you got to the solution that you're at right now and how it kind of works or like how it saves water. Um, so people could like even potentially like buy one and install it in their, their own washrooms. Yeah, definitely. So our solution is rain stick shower. 
So rain stick is a, it's a, a recirculating shower that saves 80% energy and 80% water, but it feels like a high pressure shower. So there's also, I think one of the first questions we always ask, get is, well, there's a few, but one of the first ones is, um, you know, how clean is the water if it's recirculated? So there is a robust filtration mechanism. So it cleans the water of bacteria, you know, dirt, even viruses. So it's very finite. Uh, and so water technically is safe to drink um, midway through your shower because that filtration is happening, you know, point of use at the source. It's almost like a mini wastewater treatment um, plant that's in your shower. Um, uh, so, and then the other part of that is, is it, there's also an IOT component. So now your water savings and usage is tracked. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we're seeing, you know, across the water sector and across water tech is we really need to understand how much water is being used so that we can understand where we're at and how much we need to save. And so, you know, having the ability in that IOT component so that you can finally say, okay, I've used X amount of water today, or I've saved this amount of water per this year because I've decided to opt into, you know, using and installing rain stick shower. So essentially it is a system. You can install it new build as well as a retrofit. So there's an in the wall as well as an exterior mode. And it's very similar to, you know, any other shower installation. You know, what we found is typically people install showers um, when they're going through some sort of renovation process. So, you know, if they're gonna do the, the vanities, they're gonna do, you know, their bathroom. And then at that point, they might be interested in installing rain and stick at the same time. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, very sim simple in that it's a system. It's straightforward. It doesn't come with a whole bunch of different parts. It's something that, you know, your plumber can install for you. Uh, and so we're currently pre-market, but we're going to be in 2021. We're very excited about it. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah thank so you. That's, that's super cool. And I really enjoy hearing about um, products that not only provide a great environmental benefit, but also provide a great economical benefit as well, too. Um, and it's so evident now with like artificial technology, artificial intelligence and smart home technologies that, to track a lot of our usage. I, like I know literally right here, we have a Nest thermostat. Yeah, great. <laughs> same, same concept and like- You're a target customer. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're, definitely interested, we're definitely interested in getting one too. Like it, we were talking about it like before we had the podcast, but even like as we start to see more technology come out, it just becomes so clear. Like there, it doesn't make sense to be spending so much money and- uh, resources to like whether it's powering stuff up when you're not at the home yeah. or heating up water that yeah. you know is going to go right back in the drain. So um, yeah. yeah, that's super cool to hear. It's totally about you know I think the only way for market adoption, uh, unless you you know, aside from that small percentage of people that are going to go, they're going to either pay more for something that's sustainable or they okay, they're okay with a reduced experience. The the majority of people they need their products to work as well as the conventional. There can't be any compromise. You know, sustainability really needs to be irresistible. And so, you know, to the point of the Nest thermostat, there's really that economic benefit as well. And with RainStick as well, there's um, a $500 to $700 savings. That's on an annual recurring basis. And so now a shower, which typically does not have a payback period, now has a payback period of, you know, depending on your energy um, bills and your water bills, three to four years which is now you just have that prolonged savings for the life of the shower. So it's, I think that that's a really important point to make is that economic benefit as well. I guess maybe talk a little bit more about your entrepreneurial journey and how kind of from when you first started Rainstick, how things have evolved. I know you were just in a pitch competition just a few months ago that you did really well in. So maybe if you even want to talk about some of those milestones for your business. Yeah, totally. I think, you know, from the very beginning, um, even going like back a few years, I think if you would have asked me um, if I would have been doing exactly this, this has kind of been a journey. It's been evolution. And I think, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs have their own stories about, you know, how this has turned into that. And, you know, from a very early age, I knew that I cared about um, social impact and I wanted to kind of make a difference, but I didn't really know what that looked like. And I think that... It, you know, if to anyone that's maybe listening in the future, to anyone that's really interested in um, entrepreneurism or starting your own thing, 
it can be also, you might have a really good idea or you might not know what that is, but I would just encourage people to really uh, think about what that is. And then when you know what you want to do to just take that big leap. And so over the last couple of years, we came up with this idea of rain stick, but it was really, really difficult for me to make it a reality, you know? And I think that it, it's scary, you know, quitting your day job and, and going after what you want to do and, and continue it. And so from starting rain stick, this idea, like now it would have been three and a half years ago to now just over a year ago, just saying, okay, we're going to go at this and me quitting my job, not knowing what's going to happen. I was so scared, but when I did it, it was the best thing ever. It was such a good decision. And so, you know, really, I think having faith in yourself and having faith in other people and, you know, what can be, what can happen, I think really just go for it to anyone that's listening. So I, I quit my job. I went after rain stick, started to, you know, continue with the product development. Cause that's really, I mean, as you guys know, as other entrepreneurs, it is a big process trying to get that, uh, that product developed and really to start asking the market and reiterate on it. And there's additional challenges because it's not a, you know, a SaaS product necessarily, it's a hardware product. And so it takes a longer time to build your product and then try to reiterate and get that market feedback. And so we really, that was one of the first steps is really starting to build that out with the R and D money is definitely something that's always part of, you know, the, the question and the journey. And so started to do a, a few little pitch competitions to try to do that. And most recently in, in actually February, um, uh, participated in, uh, which is put together in Waterloo region for um, women or female entrepreneurs across Canada. We ended up being part of the program. It was fantastic. I can't speak highly, uh, high enough of Fierce Founders. They do such a great job. And at the end of it is a pitch competition. We ended up winning that, which was great. And I would say as soon as we won Fierce Founders, all of a sudden people started to take us seriously. They were like, okay, people, you know, this is exciting. And so, you know, through I would say from that point in, in, in February to, you know, where we're at now, things have just um, accelerated at such a fast pace. Uh, we're now, you know, we have an engineering team. We have another engineer. We, you know, we're working with our industrial designer. Um, we're working really closely with Fleming College. And so we have all of these stakeholders and, and people that we're starting to hire on to our team. And so things are definitely um, speeding up. But I would say your role kind of changes a little bit. Where all of a sudden, rather than you doing everything, you're kind of having to shift that and become a little bit of a project manager and then work on your HR skills, which is another, you know, challenge that we are continually working on. But it's been um, such a blast, but there's been a lot of different things that have been definitely keeping us busy. Awesome. That's, that's so great to hear. And like, just such an incredible story. Um, honestly, super inspirational for us too. Like Lauren and I talk about it all the time, but like, it's so crazy when you think, when you look back, like even just one year or two years ago, it's like how quickly things change and totally all of them learn so much. Like <laughs> it, it's, it's absolutely just a fun experience and it's so inspiring to hear other people go through it. How has social impact like allowed you to stay so motivated, like with your venture and where do you kind of see your venture? Like what are some upcoming milestones you guys kind of have to look forward to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. I think that when you're doing something kind of beyond yourself that you're doing it for, you know, the future person that's going to be using your product, but not only that you're doing it for the environment um, and for the longevity of, you know, the environment that we live in, it is absolutely fulfilling. And, you know, I think it, it, it creates a lot more accountability, but also um, certainly keeps you up at night because you care so much about what you're doing. Uh, and I think that it, it's incredibly, it's been incredibly fulfilling for us. Um, and it's, it's been one part where it's been, we've been working a lot on our product. And then the other part of it is constantly learning more because through this journey, we've met a lot of incredible people who are really making, you know, their dreams come alive or they're teaching more about the environment, they're talking about water there. And so we've now had the opportunity to, you know, be part of um, sessions and be part of some of the education that happens. And so for us, it's just continued to ignite, I would say what we're doing. So social enterprise has certainly empowered us. It's fulfilled us. Um, but I think the other thing is you feel like this crazy burden. And so for the longevity, it can always be difficult with them. Um, 
with balance, I think, because you feel like you have this, this weight on your shoulders. But uh, we're very excited about, you know, the future and what, what it holds. And as far as, you know, some of the next milestones and things that we're working towards, really uh, being able to get this product into market, I think is a big thing. Um, I think one of the biggest things with um, technology and innovation, especially as it comes to um, sustainability in water is also regulation. And so looking at that meeting with governments on a country level and a statewide, because we're going in, you know, into the states and what that looks like from a regulation standpoint, making sure that all of that is taken care of is going to be a big thing, but we definitely have kind of our, our straightforward path into the market. So that would be kind of one of the big milestones. Uh, we're looking to um, to be able to secure some more finances in order to kind of get into the market and then constantly talking to customers and, you know, seeing what they want. And, you know, if they're continually interested, we'll be releasing our new website. So, so check it out, www.therainstickshower.com with some new branding and uh, some more information about our product. That's so awesome. We're so happy for you guys. And we know that you're going to succeed and that the market's going to love it. I mean, we're probably like an ideal customer too. So we'll definitely <laughs> support you like where, where we, uh, where we can, um, kind of like another uh, question to bring it back to like the educational piece. You said that you guys go to like sessions and like to have talked to like various people for people that aren't really aware about like potentially like the water problem or like climate change, like where do you think that they should go to find resources or um, do you have like some session examples that you think would be valuable for people that would be like listening to this podcast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, it, it's a really, really good point. So I've been really lucky in that I'm finishing off um, some schooling. And so through some of my school, there's been a lot of different sessions. But the other thing is we're part of an accelerator, which is focused on um, on uh, clean technology. And so through those sessions, we've been, um, you know, introduced to a lot of different um, ways and means of learning education. So for anyone who is interested in learning more, uh, a resource that I find really helpful is the Ontario Clean Technology um, uh, Association, I believe it is. And so they're constantly there on my LinkedIn. Uh, you can add me and I can share some more information. They're always having sessions um, every couple of weeks and sharing a little bit more information. Uh, and then the other thing is through some of my water networks. So there's some fantastic folks. Um, I'll call them out by name. His name is William Sarney. Um, also Andrew McKay. Uh, through them, they're both on LinkedIn and they're um, water marketing professionals. And so they know everyone who's in it and they're constantly posting and sharing information about innovative technologies that are doing more about governments that are thinking about, you know, water reuse and, you know, conservation. And so again, feel free to, to, um, to send me a message on LinkedIn. My name is Alicia McFetridge and I'd be happy to share some more information to, to folks that might be interested. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was a great answer. And we love always hearing about new resources. It sounds like you're on LinkedIn a lot. We always, you know, we follow you. We're actively on there too. And I encourage any of like our younger audience, get on LinkedIn, like don't be afraid of it. And it's, it's a really great resource, a lot of professional material. Um, and, and yeah, I guess. I, or I TikTok. Have a, I'm going to learn TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> From you guys. <laughs> Everyone get on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so I guess um, that, that like that's been amazing. Um, and so just to kind of wrap things up here, um, what's something that you'd like to kind of leave off to the user, to, to the to the watch, to the people watching at home? Um, is there anything that you found like particularly interesting or surprising as you kind of either started your entrepreneurial journey or learn more about the water crisis problem? Um, and what can you kind of just like a last minute uh, summary thing? Like even like a little story from like your business, like whatever you think. Yeah, it's up to <laughs> Yeah, totally. Um, I think, you know, to, to people that are listening right now, maybe you've thought of an idea that you've considered doing in the future. Uh, maybe it's, it's not related to um, water. Maybe it's an energy. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that you can do now is just, just do something. Start to act um, and really get out of your comfort zone. For myself, I consider myself shy. I don't necessarily like to push myself. Um, but I think that it's the most important thing to do is just do something um, and, and 
you know, force yourself to do it, stay out of your comfort zone and be in that challenge zone. Cause I think that's really where a lot of the growth happens and where, where our growth needs to happen. Uh, I think that there's a lot of problems in the world and, you know, especially in the sustainability world, we can get really down with all of the problems. I think, you know, it's important to know what they are and to be educated on them, but also to, to know that there's a lot of innovative solutions and there's a lot of really smart people in the world. And so get yourself connected to people that are going to inspire you as well. And, you know, people that can motivate you because I think that people are, are, are capable. And for myself, I, I mentioned briefly, I'm studying masters in, in science and climate change. And when I first started the program, I thought we were doomed as a society. And I thought, all right, well, you know, let's do it. But over the last couple of years and really through rain stick and the people that I've met, I have such confidence that we can absolutely make it. And um, we're going to, you know, come up. But I think the biggest thing is innovative technologies and acting now. Wow. That was beautiful. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> agree with you. Definitely get people kind of like on the ball with like understanding what the issues are, but then how there are technologies available. And it's like learning about them and incorporating mm -hmm. them into your own personal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. And I love the piece that you said about action as well, too. Like, I think that's also a really big key. I mean, it's obviously super important to learn about stuff as much as you can, but when you find a topic that really like syncs with you well, like don't be afraid to like reach out, whether maybe you want to get involved through volunteering or you find like a startup that you'd be interested in working in, or you want to start your own company, but just take action. Don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. I really love that. Mm -hmm, totally. Yeah. And I think, you know, to what you guys are doing, it's, it's really amazing, you know? And I think that, you know, from, I think you started with, with creating, um, uh, t-shirts, right? And then you moved into this sustainable um, cement solutions company. And I think that what you're both doing is very, very um, you know, admirable for a lot of people. So keep it going. And um, thanks so much for having me on this podcast today. And I look forward to, you know, staying in touch with your journey and, and um, you know, continuing to support each other and teach me how to TikTok or how to go on TikTok. <laughs> I sound like an old person when I say that. <laughs> No, of course. We'll help you out. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us too. Thank you. Have a great uh, weekend and we'll talk soon. Okay. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. If you would like to learn more, visit us at www.last20.ca. Until next time, stay sustainable.